This comedian roasted a bunch of bankers right to their face after being hired as entertainment. Did you say you've raised six thousand dollars for charity? No. What do you? People have done more than six thousand dollars of coke during this party. Six thousand? Look at yourselves. How much money do you guys have? People are making millions of dollars as I say this right now. This got weird immediately. This is a comedy show, so I'm going to shit on you to your faces. Mostly because you look like you work at mid-level boutique banks. Not even... It looks... You look like you work at Moldus and company. <laughs> Loosen up, guys. It's stand-up comedy at a charity event. We're going to have to get on board. <laughs> Thank you, one guy who runs the event. And... Everyone else is on a bunch of coke, so they're not really listening. They're like, business idea, business idea, business idea, business idea. Don't donate to the Bronx charity, business idea. I'm so sorry. I. What happens in the business is when you do this, you just don't get invited back. That's the only punishment you get. She's nodding. She's like, oh, I know. You won't be invited back. And I... I'm okay with that, to be honest. I love this, and maybe you like it too. I really think that things are shifting culturally in the United States, because when I was growing up and I was in public school, it was shameful to be in a family that didn't have a lot of money, to not have nice clothes, not live in a nice house or have a nice car. And I did not have good teeth. I had brown spots on my front teeth. We could not afford good dental care. And so I kind of wore my class on my face. And I always felt that shame and felt like I needed to hide it. I didn't smile for years. But now, things are really different. I've noticed there's a resentment toward people who do have money. Now, it's shameful to come from a family where you can't afford that stuff because it's like, you didn't have to work that hard. You had everything handed to you, and there's a resentment there. That's a huge cultural shift. This cultural shift pretty much goes in tandem with wealth inequality growing in the United States. So this is the bottom 40% in 1983 and 2016. Not a lot of growth there. But here's what it looks like for the top 0.1%. They're growing their wealth tremendously. And they're not paying their taxes. So they're taking in way more money than we are and paying lower tax rates than us. The blue line here is the tax share of the top 0.1%, and the orange line is their wealth share. So they are not being taxed nearly as much as they used to be. And we really saw this shift under the Reagan administration. Let's look at the wealth concentration, how it spiked in recent decades. The orange bar is the average wealth of the people in the Forbes 400. And you can see that while the bar to entry has remained relatively the same, the people already there are growing their wealth a ton. We're not getting a lot of new rich people. Instead, the top 1% just keeps accumulating more and more money. Now I wanna go back to what he said about these bankers who make a ton of money only giving $6,000 to charity because it reminds me of something I read. Keep in mind, businesses would not be profitable and investments would not have returns if workers were not working for long hours and low wages every day. So is charity, even if they give more than $6,000, really worth it? It was written a long time ago in England, but I swear it is relevant now. Let no one believe, however, that the cultivated Englishman openly brags with his egotism. On the contrary, he conceals it under his vilest hypocrisy. What? The wealthy English fail to remember the poor? They, who have founded philanthropic institutions, such as no other country can boast of, Philanthropic institutions, forsooth, as though you rendered the proletarians, so the working class, a service in first sucking out their very lifeblood and then practicing your self-complacent, thoracic philanthropy upon them, placing yourselves before the world as mighty benefactors of humanity when you give back to the plundered victims the hundredth part of what belongs to them.